The third word from the cross. Woman, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. Now these words are powerful. They're important. These words are specific. But on the surface, they may seem rather insignificant compared to the other words you will hear about tonight. But listen, when you give them your attention, and when you pay attention to the details, you'll hear that very thing. These words are powerful. There's a common phrase that the devil is in the details. But whoever spoke that, whoever wrote that, whoever quotes that, can I tell you they're misled? Rather that God is in the details. As you read the scriptures, as you study his word, what you find is that the details, my friends, matter. Details matter to God. In fact, God uses the details to better communicate his sovereignty. They communicate his wisdom. They communicate that he is who he says he is. And listen, in the details, what you find is that God is God, and he is sovereign. The more you study, the more you begin to realize that God cares about the smallest things. Listen, he can move nations. He can work a plan of salvation for the entirety of all mankind. He can see from generation to generation while able to ordain the smallest and minute details of our lives. A few members of our church were recently in Jerusalem and they turned around, they were in line, and they turned around to find they ran into a friend of theirs that they hadn't seen in 25 years. This wasn't Pittsburgh, this wasn't Pennsylvania, this was Jerusalem of all places. They were reunited with friends that they hadn't seen in 25 years. The odds of that happening are absolutely incredible. Some would say this is almost impossible. But listen, my friends, God is in the details. He works all things to his glory. Small things, daily things, hourly things, minute by minute, second by second, God is in the details. Now listen, these words from the cross, when you hear them, it may seem like they are a dying man's will or last wishes. That Jesus is simply taking care of the details of his will. What's going to happen with mom? But can I tell you, when we start to see the details, what you'll find is that there's so much more in these words. And one of the details worth considering is the people and the place. See, if we look to verse 25 and 26, right before these words, what we find is this important detail. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother. Mary is there. And where is Mary? She, my friends, is near the cross. It goes on to say she was standing nearby. In fact, it would go on to point that Jesus can actually see her. That's how close she is. And if you consider that Jesus in his present condition, I'm willing to say that he probably can't see very far, nor can, nor can he focus in his present condition. And the point I'm willing to trying to make this evening is Mary, the mother of Jesus, isn't far off. She isn't gone hiding or running or deserting her Jesus. No, she is close. She's so very close. In 2004, I remember seeing Mel Gibson's The Passion of Christ. Our church had rented out a theater. The place was packed. And what I find incredible is what you can remember. I can in fact remember that movie 20 years ago. I remember sitting in those comfortable seats, feeling rather uncomfortable. I remember in that room the sniffling because people were crying. I remember at the end of it, people don't get up, they didn't rush out, they sat in silence. What was different about that movie? What was different is because the cross came close. 
It wasn't something you just heard about. It wasn't something you just read about. No, you got to see the cross up close. Close. And it grabs your attention. Grabs your attention. See, so see, Mary, my friends, she's so very close to the cross that she can hear with her own ears his moaning. She can hear with her own ears the whip hitting his back. She can hear with her own ears the nails being driven into his hands. She's that very close. And what she hears, she will never, ever forget. She's so very close that she can see the wounds on his body. She can see his wounds his pain and his suffering, she can see that spear piercing his side. She can see that blood pouring forth. She can see his broken bones and his tendons being exposed to the world. She's so very close that what she sees, she will never, ever forget. So never forget, she's so very close. When my daughter, Adeline, was learning to walk, she was about six months old. That's how, that's how Grunwald's row, by the way. I remember this, this scene, we were downstairs in our children's ministry. I'm not for sure why we were down there. My family were there. My wife and I were sitting on this stage. The kids were playing, and all of a sudden, she comes walking towards us. She falls, and she face plants. She didn't just face plant, she face planted with her mouth wide open. She lands on the corner of the stage. It tears up her gums. Blood begins to pour forth, come out like crazy. And as a parent, you see this situation. She begins to wail and cry. Our hearts drop. I will never forget that. In fact, as I tell you this story as a parent, I can almost still feel the pain of that event. See, child pain, child parent pain is a real thing. And when our kids go through something like that, as parents, we can, we can feel it. And see, that's what I believe happens with Mary that day. As her kid suffers, she feels that pain. When Jesus suffers, Mary does too. I imagine Mary is a wreck, witnessing all the things that have taken place. She's a wreck emotionally, which may cause her even to be physically sick. We know that emotionally, it can control our physical health. Why? Because the most horrific device ever created in all of mankind for the purpose of torture and for death is being used upon her very own son, Jesus, her baby boy, Jesus, suffering on that cross. But listen, it was in her deepest and it was in her darkest despair that is in this moment that Jesus speaks. And he says one word, my friends. He says one word that will grab her attention. Woman. Now listen, we hear that. <laughs> and culturally, it doesn't quite translate as well as what's written. We hear that, it sounds maybe like disrespect. It sounds like, is he just angry or is this an attitude? Why woman in this moment? But when you study, and I took some time to look at the Greek, a better translation that carries the affection that's really taking place here would be better translated ma'am or mom. So now, now listen to that. Put that in the, put that in the words there. Mom, 
Behold your son. It changes what's taking place. It, it now expresses the real concern that Jesus has for her. Not just her physical whereabouts, what's going to happen with Mary after my death. No, no, there's something more that Jesus is trying to communicate to Mary in this moment. See, listen, this is the second time that he calls her by this name. This is important detail. This is the second time he calls her by this name. The last time, do you remember the wedding of Cana? The wedding party turned dry. They ran out of wine. Mary sees this event, recognizes how this could be a social catastrophe, and so she runs to Jesus, and she says, Jesus, do something about this. And Jesus says, woman, why do you bring this to me? It is not my hour. But did you catch that? He said, woman, this is not by accident. God is in the details. See, as Jesus speaks to her on the cross, he's reminding her of that conversation at the wedding. He's reminding her that back then it wasn't his time. It wasn't the hour. But now, Mary, it is. Mary, now is my hour. Now is my time. Now it is. He states this to the, 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 the disciples at the Passover. He says, the hour has come. John 17, he prays it to the Father. Father, the hour has come. Now listen, if you're Mary and you're on your deepest, darkest hours, you feel like, you feel pain, you feel what's going on to your son, and you hear these words from Jesus. He calls your name and he reminds you that no one takes my life. No, no, no. No one takes it. I'm here to give it. This is my hour and my sacrifice. Be encouraged, mom. Be encouraged. See, what Mary receives from these words are not just the physical plan for her provision but awareness of the providential plan of God for the spiritual provision for all mankind. She's let in on the secret. She's made aware of his plan. He's speaking to her on multiple levels. He's speaking to her to the deepest, darkest parts of her soul. What seems like it's out of control, Mary. Oh, no, 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 it's not. Mary, I know today may feel awful. It may feel like a, a loss in your book. Mary, you may have questions. You may not understand what is all happening. This feels like chaos. This feels like it's out of control. And you may feel like you have no hope. But understand, Mama, Mama, Understand, Mama, it's my hour. This is my hour. Listen, I, Mary, I know, that, I know that you might not get it, and you may just want to quit. You may not understand the plan, and the plan may feel difficult, and your heart may, may want to just, if it's broken, you may just want to give up or, or lay it all down, but understand this is my plan. And my plan has a great purpose. Mary, get this. Mary, remember, you remember the wedding back when? When everyone was drinking the wine? They were still thirsty, weren't they? It never quenched. You remember Mary the groom? He was supposed to, it was his job and his responsibility to provide enough wine for everybody but he was insufficient. Remember those Old Testament sacrifices that didn't work? Remember, Mary, remember the law that could not provide righteousness? 
Remember the good deeds of men that fall short of the glory of God? Remember human striving? Couldn't quite get there? Listen, Mary, I have a greater plan. You may not understand it all, but I have a great purpose in all of this. No one is taking my life. I'm giving it. I'm in control. That's what, that's what Jesus wanted to communicate. That's what Jesus wanted her to hear. And it's what he wants you to hear. It's what he wants you to hear. That tonight, you may be broken, you may be wounded, you may be hurt, you may be frustrated, but would you be near the cross? And would you listen so that you could hear his voice? Would you listen as he wants to call you by name? You may be depressed. Man, this week may have been the hardest week of your life. This season may be hard for you. Dark nights. Would you also draw near so that you could see with your very eyes what he's done for you on that cross? And would all of us tonight draw near to understand that there is a plan in place that his purposes are unfolding. He's working it all to his glory. And we can walk in such confidence of that, that in my pain there is a purpose. In my pain there's a purpose. We can have such confidence in that because of what he's done for you and what he's done for me. Let's pray. Oh, Heavenly Father, who has set the solitary within the family and by your Son, Jesus Christ, has made of all believers, a new family from all the nations of the earth. Grant, we pray, you, that as we draw close to the cross, and that's what we do, we want to be near the cross. So may we draw close to one another. May the world say again, see how they love one another. And may the world know by our love that we have indeed made your son, Jesus Christ, to be both our Lord, our Savior of the world. It is in his name we pray. Amen.